Hello friends, today I will discuss a very important process in ruby laser that is spiking in ruby laser. As we have discussed in working of ruby laser that the terminus at the end of laser action in ruby laser is the ground state E1 in ruby laser. Therefore it is difficult to maintain the population inversion. This will result in the depletion of upper laser level E2 population due to stimulated emission more rapidly than it can be restored by the flash light that is optical pumping source. The laser emission is made up of spikes of high intensity emissions. This phenomenon is called spiking of the laser. I repeat. Due to the terminus of the laser action in the ground state E1, so there will be depletion of upper laser level E2 population. That is, there will be lesser number of uh, chromium ions in E2 level than the ground state. So, so the population inversion. Uh, will happen again with the help of a pumping source that is optical pumping in the case of ruby laser. So there is a break of a few microseconds so that population inversion can happen again. So there will be gap of the output. So this will result in the spiking of laser. I explain why the name spiking. We will make a graph between intensity versus time. Intensity, intensity of the output of the ruby laser beam. For example, the output and the output we will get this peak. We will get this peak and the output I have already discussed it is 6, 9, 4, 3 angstrom in the case of ruby laser. So we will get a peak due to the output. We will get intensity due, uh, due to the output of the ruby laser. And after that there will be a break because there will be no chromium ions in the chromium no chromium ions in the E2 level. So the population inversion will not happen in between levels E2 to E1. So again the pumping will happen, again the stimulated absorption will happen and population inversion will happen in between levels E2 and E1. So after certain time, after microsecond, again there will be a peak. So when there will be again break of population inversion there is intensity will decrease again after few seconds there will be a peak then there will be decrease then there will be a peak then there will be a decrease in the intensity so intensity versus time you can analyze from the intensity versus time we will get these spikes these spikes in the case of ruby laser now what is spikes post person use the spike shoes uh, why is it used to make spiked here? So this is spiking the peaks. So due to this, these peaks, the name is spiking in the case of ruby laser. So in the case of ruby laser, we will not get output, the continuous output. We will get the output in the form of pulses. So ruby laser output in pulse form after the depletion of E2 state, the laser action ceases for a few microseconds. Since the flash lamp is still active, it again pumps the ground state chromium ions to upper level and again laser action begins. So as you have seen that again the laser action begins, it means you will get a second peak. Again there will be depletion. Again, there will be depletion of the chromium ion in the E2 level, so intensity will decrease. Again, there will be pumping, so we will get again the peak and this process will continue.
uh, and again laser action begins. A series of such pulses is produced until the intensity of the flashlight has fallen to such a level that it can no longer, sorry I have written here I, it has, it can no longer rebuild the necessary population inversion. So the output laser will be in the form of pulse in ruby laser or in other words it will not be continued. This is the major disadvantage of ruby laser that the output is not continuous. Uh, I hope you must have understood the spiking in ruby laser. If there is any query, please post in the comment section. For further reference, please search our website www.venuscience.com. Please, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, this is our channel. Thank you. Thanks a lot.